Well, I felt it was important for me to travel this far to uh, uh, to support uh, the cause here for uh, e equal uh, equalization for the, the children being funded for services on and off reserve. And, and INAC has a responsibility, you know, when, when you talk about funding versus service, there's a connection there, and that's the difference because uh, I believe our children are in, in our area, you know, are, are not treated equal. When I look at the outgoing AFN chief speak about 22 percent, uh, the difference in funding, you know, that's, that's a huge issue. And when we try to provide a service on reserve as opposed to urban, uh, we're asked to follow a standard but with less funding. So this is why we drove this far to support the cause because it's a worthwhile cause. And, uh, and I think the stronger, the, the bigger the voice, uh, INAC has no choice but to listen. So I, I feel it was very, very important to take time out to be here. The reason why I'm here is on behalf of our children. Uh, one of my job I'm charged with is to be the voice of our children, and we need to be heard all over the world. And we want the federal government and all governments to respect the rights of our children and to um, honor the, the the spirit of the child and um, uh, humanize the services that uh, that uh, we receive from the Department of Indian Affairs and the Government of Canada, et cetera, and the provincial governments and all people involved. On a personal note, uh, this day I think has been a long time coming. Uh, I remember the day that Directive 20-1 came out and I was working in Alberta and uh, had the privilege and honor of being a director in Alberta and Saskatchewan. And right from the onset, I, I saw the inequalities, but never really had a an avenue or an opportunity to address uh, those inequalities until I came back to Saskatchewan and worked with my colleagues in Saskatchewan. I know in with Yorkton and with other agencies in Saskatchewan, we really pushed uh, for family services to keep our families together here to be a part of that process and to support my colleagues across the country and for the children in this country. There's a lot of people uh, room is filled. They had to use two hearing rooms, not one. Um, and it's, it's really gratifying to see brothers and sisters from the East Coast to the West Coast and people in between. I think we, in this country, for First Nations people, we've been less than. And I think now we are demanding that we be treated as equal citizens of this country. I believe that um, Canada has to, to view all the research and all the findings from the research, the extensive research, in the last 25 years, maybe even 100 years, and uh, stop viewing it with eyes wide shut and um, listen to the voices and it's very simple just do the right thing mm -hmm. that's all it is because these are children they can't speak for themselves they have to depend on their on people like us and it's not only about dollars it's about responsibility by all levels of government whether it be provincial uh federal um, so this is why uh, I feel it's uh, the the action taken here and by their support. I was, just, I was on the, the web website last night, on I'm a witness, and it's growing every mm -hmm. day. And that's good to see because it's from all walks of life, whether it be First Nation or what nationality, we all believe in children and the importance of their existence. So that's why I feel that uh, what's taking place here today is, is needed. We are a people that that will continue to exist because we are survivors. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors were survivors. So that's why I'm proud to be here today to support the cause.